Well, hello everyone. Thanks everyone for being here, DVK, for inviting me. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, the first of the NES or Famicom games for Saint Seiya. Uh, this game was released in 87, 89, I don't remember quite well. Um, of course, I wanted to make some introductions to as to why I did uh, a task for this game. So Saint Seiya uh, was aired out the first time in Japan in 86, the same year I was born. And it wasn't until 10 years later, more or less, that it was aired in South America, where I was born. And um, by then, Saint Seiya was the first time I had ever seen an anime. And of course, it blew my mind. All the other cartoons at the time were so simple, right? And, and this was a very complex, violent, perhaps also, but also it had a, hist a story, right? Every chapter uh, continued the story from before. So it was the first time I had exposure to a narrative, something that I could uh, look forward to to watching after school, right? Uh, so Saint Seiya is naturally my favorite anime of all time. And now that I became a Tula Sisters B-Runner, I, I had no choice than to task this game. Uh, this game I have never played before, uh, before I, I was a grown-up. The next game, the one for which there is a, a bonus round if we reach $500, I think, uh, that's the one I played when I was a kid. I got a bootleg copy of that game. And that one I cracked even when I was a child. I cracked the password system. I would play with a Infinite Cosmo and, and HP. And now that I'm a grown-up, I was I could figure out how to crack it using legal uh, or like more uh, inputs with the controllers, right? So if you're interested in seeing how we cracked that one, uh, I think we are very, very close to reaching that goal. But right now what you're going to see is a Tula Sister Spear Run, so I'm not going to be playing myself. Uh, I'm going to be commenting as to what's going on because at some points it can be a little bit hectic and uh, it's going to get crazy. Uh, well, I hope you like it. Uh, but first, before play, uh, hitting the play button, I would like to explain a little bit how this game works, at least the menu system, which is very the, the very key point of how we crack this game. Uh, this task is, uh, was made by me and Tao Tao is a Japanese uh, tasser who contributed to many hints and improvements to my initial work, so he also deserves a lot of uh, credits for this. So now I'm going to play the game myself a little bit. So this is the intro. Then you choose to start the game. And what the game asks you first, which is very quirky, I would say, is your birth date. And based on your birth date, it's going to deduce which sign of the zodiac you are, right? And I put this random. Uh, it's strange that they ask you also for they ask you also for your the year you were born, but whatever. And based on the the, the date you put here, it's going to be your uh, zodiac sign. And the difference this, this makes is is minimal. Uh, depending on your sign, you're gonna get more stats for attack or defense or whatever. This, as you will see, doesn't quite matter because we're going to crack all those stats right up at the very beginning to get. Uh, a lot of power right from the get-go. So that should be Scorpio if you can read Japanese. Uh, I had a, a translation of this game, but um, the translation doesn't play quite, quite well and the glitch we use for the menu is not on the translation. The translation, it comes from a French uh, repackaging of the game. So it, Saint Seiya was also very famous in Europe just before it was in South America and we got the Spanish version of uh, Saint Seiya which had a, a bit of... Um, censored images and scenes, but whatever. Um, what you see here is the normal gameplay, right? You can walk, directions, jump, attack, and at, at the same time you can enter the menu. If you enter the menu, you have several options. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to exit. <laughs> Let's advance it here. Oops, same button. So you have armor here. So when you get the armor, if you follow the story, if you watch the anime, Seiya gets his armor after beating Cassius in the first uh, in the competition for getting the Pegasus arm, uh, armor or cloth. Um, here is stats. Here is fast travel, or I think this no, his, this is fast travel and this is password. Um, we're not gonna not, not gonna get here, and what we want here is to enter the menu. So now I'm going to load something I did a small script. Where is it? And this script is going to show you some things that are very important to take a look at and are invisible no normally. 
right? But we want to see it because that, that's what makes this task a task, right? <laughs> so basically two things here, very important ones. The first one is how many fights are in the game? I think there are 34 fights. To beat the game, you have to fight all of them, right? There, you cannot skip any of them. And you have to fight them more or less in order. There are certain places in the game where you can uh, do them all of order, but in the end, you have to fight every single fight. And here you see also, uh, well, when we fight someone and defeat them, you want to see an X, right? Here. Um, so now it's all dots. We haven't fight, fought anyone uh, yet. And what you see down here is the menu option. And you will wonder why this is important. This is the least interesting uh, element of the game, which menu option I'm choosing. But you will see this becomes very, very interesting. So here in this menu, you can change um, two things, basically. One is the, uh, you can exchange damage. So that's the HP for Cosmo. Cosmo is your magic power, let's say, your energy that you can use to, to hit enemies with. Uh, so you can exchange them. That's a very quirky thing about this game uh, in particular, and the next game as well. Um, but that's not so, so interesting. And here are your stats. So attack power, magic power, uh, defense power, and HP. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it doesn't quite matter. Uh, this is armor power, jump power, so how high you jump, and CP, I also forgot what it was, because it doesn't quite matter uh, to these stats. So you will see I can choose, I can put the, the, um, the indicator in different options and the menu option number will change. You cannot do anything else than that. Now I don't have any experience so I cannot modify any of this, but, but, <laughs> horsepower. Um, this is menu option one. So the game has been programmed so that the only arrows that matter here is up and down. Left and right produce this sound as to say, this is not something you should be pressing right now. But the programmers seem to have missed combinations of these two directions. So what if we press up and right? <laughs> Something like this happens, right? We have broken, I, I guess the programmers checked for up, down, left and right. But if you press diagonal things, you can go to many options that don't exist in this menu. So let's go and follow that. And you will see we can go from 65 all down to the normal options again. And we go back to the normal options, you see, we're back to the, the menu. So what happens now if we press the button, the A button, to change the stats on options that don't exist? Well, things like this may happen. Right? Basically, the game is allowing us to decrease and increase uh, settings that are positions in memory that don't belong to this menu. It belongs to other things in the game that are not related to this menu or the stats. And as a consequence, not only have we maxed out, so you see 999 here in damage and, and uh, XP and Cosmo, we, it's not 999, it's 65,000, right? And another thing you can notice uh, here is that the fights have been updated. We have been able to modify two fights. Basically, the game now considers that these two fights are fought, so we don't have to fight them. Basically, well, we have skipped two of the 35, 34 fights. So taking this in mind, I'm going to, when I play the task, I'm going to leave the fights, uh, uh, this, this uh, information here, so you will see the, the progress of the game. And I will tell you what's going to happen at each point. So let me load the task. And it's right here. Go to the beginning. So now this is the boot state, right? This is not anything if special. We go through the same stage. So now I'm going to hit play, but I will explain everything. If I have to pause, please uh, tell me and I can pause and explain what's going on. Uh, this is the fastest date you can input, basically. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3 is the fastest input you can make. Now the game starts. We go immediately into the menu and we go to the stats option and we optimize everything, basically. Full power, uh, full damage, full experience. We max out all of the power elements. So now we can beat everyone with a single hit with the least amount of force. I will pause here to explain what this menu is. Basically, when you go to do an attack, there's a random uh, chance you start attacking or the enemy starts attacking. Of course, this being a task, 
we always manipulate the game for us to attack first. It's not 50-50, the more powerful you are, the more chances you have to attack first. Um, so we are so powered up that it's not, it doesn't need manipulation at this point of the game. And here is how much of the, each uh, element of your stats you want to use during the attack. The more you use, the more damage you're going to do, but also the more Cosmo you're going to use. And you may wondering, maybe wondering why I didn't max out the Cosmo. Well, there's a, a character in the game that is going to give us 10 Cosmo here. But that action of giving 10 Cosmo resets the second byte that we use to max out the Cosmo. So it will um, bring it back to normal. So at this point in the game, I don't max out the Cosmo. I just use what we got from the beginning. The thing is, we are so powered up, I don't need to use much. I just fill half of the, of the bar here and you're going to see what happens. So we use the kick because when you, we use small amounts of power, the kick is more powerful. Later in the game, we want to use the punch. That is a superpower, let's say. So Marin goes down, you'll see the X here now, so she's beaten. Now you're going to see this X activate for Cassius, means we are fighting now. And again, we use even less power, he's so weak. <laughs> Uh, and we beat him with a single uh, hit. Of course, in normal gameplay, this will take a couple turns and he will also attack, but they don't have a chance here. Uh, fights will get more interesting, quote unquote, when we get to the gold, uh, gold saints. So now we got the cloth. What the cloth does is you are faster and stronger during the normal gameplay, which of course for a task we need to be faster and jump higher. Um, but at the same time, it's going to waste Cosmo. So one Cosmo energy every 10 seconds or so. But that's not a concern because at some point in the game, we want to max out the Cosmo. So that's uh, we will use it from the get-go. Normally, you wouldn't use it because it will waste Cosmo unnecessarily. So now we talk to Saori. She arguably tells us, because I cannot translate, sorry guys, uh, that we need to go and fight in the Galactic Wars, which is part of the, the first saga of the anime and the manga. So the anime and the manga is divided in the Galactic Wars at the beginning, then transitions into the Sanctuary Saga, and then Poseidon, and uh, no, Asgard in the anime, and then Poseidon, and then H Hades, uh, and then the new ones, but I don't, I don't know about them. Now we talk to Mino, and this is where she gives us 10 Cosmo, I think. Yes. And that's a bad thing because that resets our Cosmo, uh, otherwise I would have maxed out at the very beginning. Uh, something I forgot to say, now if you see here, we have already cancelled two fights in the first access to the menu that I did before. The Shun fight, that comes very soon, and the Whale Moses fight, which is a, a Silver Saint that comes much later, right? Later on, when we access the menu again and we optimize the Cosmo, uh, we will uh, also cancel another two fights, I think. Yeah, two, two more fights. And the reason why I didn't, bef didn't do it before is that it, this, is, this task is extremely optimized and we optimized, since we had to access the menu twice, we optimized the accesses, so which fights we disable. So the ones that were closer to the cosmos are going to be disabled later because now we're going to in that direction in the menu option. So very technical, but we say a few dozen frames by doing that. So there you go, that's the explanation. So Shiryu is down, Hyoga is down, we skip Shun, right? Here. So we are supposed to fight Shun first, but Iki appears right off the gate because of course Shun is disabled. And now we are out. There's some fast traveling here. We're going to go um where do we go now? To Saori's house? Yes. And uh, because it's the shortest uh, route to finding our first Iki doppelganger. So for some reason, uh, I think that's quite bizarre in the anime, in the manga, that uh, Iki would recruit many black doppelgangers for his own persona and they, he gave them armors in some way. I, that's not explained ever. It's kind of a quirky thing of the anime and the manga, but we have to defeat him. And this is not the first time we defeat a, a, a black phoenix uh, in the game. As a matter of fact, the game has a, quite a lot of repeated fights because I think they were requested to develop a longer game than what the anime provides or the, the manga provides. So some fights are duplicated um, for some reason and, and that doesn't happen at all in the manga, of course. Uh, 
So now we get into the caves where we fight all the black doppelgangers. So for every one of our bronze saints, there's a black counterpart. First, we fight an yet another black phoenix. In, in the meantime, you can see the X on top. They are starting to fill up. Uh, these doppelgangers can go down with very least effort. You can see with the with the max out stats that we have, it only takes a, a small part of the bar uh, to defeat. But that's gonna change in the future. This part, um, skipping these columns and, and breaking the columns, is super hard in, in normal gameplay, but in a task, of course, you make <laughs> we make it look easy. So, Black Cygnus goes down. Um, you can see here that, technically, he's not supposed to be the next fight, but we are fighting out of order. Um, I got this from Tao Tao uh, and other tasks uh, before mine. Um, they figure out a much faster route than I could. So this is great props to them, because I my first attempt I didn't follow up the optimal path, but now it's super optimized, because the the caves are uh, some kind of maze, so you can enter and exit different uh, screens uh, in different ways. So I I could never figure that out. So now we defeat Black Andromeda. Still, I think this is Black Pegasus. Uh, he's still waiting for us. So now we go back. And if I'm not wrong, here this is the place where we purposely fall down and when we go up, we are closer to the exit of the screen, so that's also a, a, a shortcut. Normally you wouldn't want to fall down because that takes HP from you, but since we have 65,000 uh, HP, we don't really care about that. So now we go and fight Black uh, Dragon, right? yet another doppelganger. If you saw the anime, this is a very emotional fight, right? This is a very... One of the most interesting fights in the anime, but here it's just, yeah, go down and stay there. <laughs> so he's out. Now we go, now we really go for Black Pegasus. So we jump down to skip the screen again. And we get out closer to the exit of the screen on the right, so that brings us closer. We jump down, but that's an actual shortcut, so this game is super cryptic. Um, so now we go for our next fight. In the meantime, sip of water. So, for those who don't know me or my work, I don't blame you. Um, I'm a Tasser, I'm a Tasser and judge at tasvideos.org. And I normally use a routing bot, so a brute force um, exploration bot. So I use very high, high performance um, uh, brute force algorithms. But in this game, I just did it by by so first of all i couldn't emulate this game for the because it has a different mapper than i was supported by my my bot i fixed that now but this this task you're watching is all handmade uh which makes me proud because um of all the 35 tasks i have more or less 32 um only two of them are hand, handmade and this is one of them so this took a lot of patience and well the normal tasking process that everyone does and i've been skipping because i have a bot that does it for me <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, so now, 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 this is the important part. This is the second key part. Uh, the first one was in the beginning. You see that I'm running out of Cosmo. So this is a very good place to quote unquote refuel. Before I enter the fight, so the very last frame possible, just because, I will enter the menu and do this process again. You should pay attention to the fights and the Cosmos here. Well, good luck doing that. <laughs> so I disabled two more fights and I made my Cosmo infinite, basically 65,000. So now I can attack Iki with all my might, almost, almost all my might, with the punch, and he goes down. Right, so normally in the game this is a very challenging fight, but meh. Here's just yet another Monday for Seiya. Um, you can use other players, other bronze fighters, warriors. Um, by changing them during the fight screen, but for this task that's not completely necessary and in general I don't think there's any point in doing that uh, so this game kind of fails in being diverse in the in the fighters you can choose. You, you're always say yeah during these um, intermediate uh, walking parts, right? And you always start a say yeah during the fight, so it's kind of a say yeah centric game, whereas the next game if we reach the donations goal, I will show you. Um, 
The next game is more diverse, we can choose other other players. Although we choose only Shun for the task, but anyway. Here we're following the story more or less. We get a letter from Mino saying take care of yourself. And um, now it's on, right? We teleport back to the Saori's house and we want to first uh, fight this anime only character that is quite bizarre called Docrates. Uh, and quite bizarrely as well, the we fight this guy three times in the in the game. I think in the anime we only fight, uh, they only fight it twice. Um, but for some reason they had to triplicate this guy, and this guy doesn't exist doesn't exist in the manga. It's only anime, and doesn't make quite sense. I we, you don't know if he's a bronze uh, warrior or a silver warrior. It's kind of a, in in the middle. So now we talk to Satsumi for some reason that's part of the lore. We talk to Shiro but we get out. So we got close to him to activate the text but we get out as soon as possible such that we can get back to Saori's house as soon as fast as possible. And now he tells us that we need to find the observatory. I guess that's what he says at least. And this is a secret place in the house so good luck if you don't have a walkthrough because that's, you have to go to that specific place and touch that specific lamp and you're gonna meet the a recording of Saori's father or grandfather talking to him to Seiya and telling him that he is meant to protect Saori because she's Athena or something like that and now we talk to Tatsumi again and we leave and now we can teleport and the destination is the Colosseum. We meet this guy again, but this is part of the anime lore. In this fight, uh, Hyoga will freeze his legs and then Seiya will punch his face. Um, and then the police comes and everyone runs. <laughs> For some reason, these guys are superhuman, powerful, but if the police comes, hey, we don't want to get into trouble, right? So suddenly uh, these uh, randos appear and we can kill them to get more experience but of course we have enough experience for the rest of the game. This is the first silver saint called uh, Auriga Capella and he's also pretty weak so we can beat him but he's part of the lore. So now we're back into the lore of the, of the manga at least. So now we go and fight the next one. This is the first round of silver saints. These guys go down. And now we fight Cerverus Dante. I think he has some kind of ball with a chain he attacks you with. Uh, whatever, he doesn't have an opportunity to show that because he goes down again as well. The next Silver Saint is quite a famous one. Probably the most beloved warrior in the whole anime. Um, Lizard Misty. So if you watch the anime you know who he is. And he's fantastic. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, also he doesn't have a, a time to shine here because we beat him right off. So in increasing the bars here to for the power of the attacks, holding the right key is not the fastest way. The fastest way to increase the bars is to hold and tap with one frame difference uh, after each, such that um, the game captures the increase every two frames instead of three and if you add all the fights we have there's 34 fights and all the times we have to attack this adds up quite a lot of seconds so this is something that Tao Tao discovered or at least, at least he told me and um, pretty much uh, improved quite a, quite a bit the, the whole run this is uh, Crow Jamian I don't know if he's in the manga but this in the anime he kidnaps Saori and we go and rescue her so that's why we are here and after we fall down after the fight, um, a very cool song, uh, uh, like an uh, official song in the anime is played, so that's quite nice, it's quite an emotional time, but whatever. We beat him. And now we talk back to Saori after she's rescued. I have no idea what she says there. Um, again, if you want, you can play the translated game. Uh, there's also a hack, right? The translated game in French, you can hack it and have it in English. This is the first goal saint we fight, this is Leo Ayoria, and we really have to go all in. So now this is a key point. Uh, you will see our armor turned uh, gold-like. This is because we have found all the pieces of the armor, and as soon as we meet Ayoria, this is the first time we can 
use this gold um, cloth. The way to unlock this cloth is by uh, maxing out this, this power uh, stats. So even though we may have not needed to max them out, although in this case we needed to, um, we, we need to maximize them to get the gold armor here. This is kind of lore and also kind of not lore because uh, in the anime it it is the Sagittarius armor that gets uh, put into Seiya. But whatever, uh, I guess there's, that was too much to ask for for a humble NES game. But also in the anime, at some points his armor turns gold, the Pegasus armor. So it's kind of like inconsistent. In general, Saint Seiya is quite inconsistent at the beginning. I would say during the the Sanctuary Saga it becomes quite an anime that you can say, okay, this makes a little bit more sense. Anyway, um, that's why we turn gold and that gives us a, uh, a boost in power. So Ayoria fa uh, falls down at the first attack. Normally this would be a very hard um, fight. Now getting the gold armor is not deterministic. It's probabilistic as well. So you have certain RNG and if you get the correct RNG, you get the gold armor. Of course, we manipulate RNG to always get the gold armor, but it's a second aspect to this. You cannot get the gold armor twice in a row, even if it's another fight. So after fighting, after making an attack with the gold armor, supposedly you have to do an attack without the gold armor, but there's a way to uh, override this. So this is a fight that we skipped now. We should have fought China, but uh, we have disabled it in that fight. Alright, so back to the cloth. Um, the way to get the gold armor again is to change your character to another one and then coming back. That resets the bit, that tells that you have had the gold armor and now you can use it again. So that's why you're gonna see me um, changing characters and changing it back to Seiya uh, in the next few fights. So for, for some reason here we repeat all of the Silver Saint fights. Um, I guess to make the game longer, so you'll see Misty again. If you knew what happened to him during the anime, there's no way he could appear again. He was dead as, as nails, right? So, okay, we fight him. Even the background is the same again, the, the beach, where whatever, we're in the sanctuary, but... Okay. Um, this is Centaurus Bubble again. The next fight is already skipped. That's, that would be Whale Moses, as I said in the beginning. That's the fight is disabled from the very beginning, so we're going to jump right. Um, so this is where you have found would have found the battle, but he's not there. And now we're going straight to Docrates number three. If I'm not incorrect, yes, that's Socrates again for some reason. He's well and alive, but this time we're gonna get him. So with this fight, we have to maximize. So for some reason, he gets more, much more powerful. So we have to go golden, right? Getting golden, as I said, is not ideal. Because having to get golden at least, because now we have to change characters for the next fight, and that takes a few frames. Uh, ideally, Torquates should have taken a, a normal attack, but whatever, uh, it is what it is. Uh, un until and unless we find a, a way to make ourselves much more powerful. So this is. Um, Hound Assyrian again. Now we have to switch to Iki and we switch back to Seiya <clears throat> to become golden because now the characters are a bit more uh, tough. So we need to beat them with a strong power. And he's gone. The next fight and the last one, if I'm not incorrect, is uh, Algo. We ignore Marin. She gives you the, the shield of Athena, but so that's apparently not necessary to beat the game, although in the lore you need it. Um, we switch to Hyoga to renew the Golden Cloth uh, bit, and then we can attack again with the Golden Cloth, and he goes down. Now we can go straight to the 12, um, the 12 houses uh, of the Saints, the, the 12 Golden Saints. But the game is incomplete. So a little bit of history before we get into that. First of all, we have disabled Aldebaran of Taurus, so he's skipped. So this is Arius. Mu should be here, but he doesn't appear in this game. Of course, we don't fight him in the lore, so he doesn't need to appear. Aldebaran should be here, but he has been disabled uh, by, your, uh, by your cheats, let's put it this way. So our very first fight in this uh, last part of the game is Gemini, the, 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 the armor alone without Saga. 
But this game was released before the end of the Sanctuary Saga, right? Uh, at least uh, uh, the manga. So the developers had no idea what would come. So they had to improvise. So we will see, you will see uh, the only gold saints that appear in this game are the ones that had appeared in the, in the manga before the, 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 the story reached the 12, uh, the, this last part of the Sanctuary Saga. So that would be Middle of Scorpio, Shaka, Ayoria, Aldebaran, Mo, but he doesn't appear here, and the Gemini Cloth, but that's all. All the other gold saints that only appear when you reach the house, right, the, their house, are not in this game, are in the next game. So again, if you want to see them, uh, let's reach the goal. So um, we have disabled Aldebaran, so we go straight to Gemini. So this is uh, the cloth alone, remotely managed by Saga. We need to change to Shiryu and go back to get the golden power up. And there we go. And he goes down. But he doesn't move because whatever, he's uh, a static object. Now we go to uh, Death Mask. Right. Or how we disable him? No, he's there. So here's the Saint of Cancer, and he. It's a re uh, normally it's a really cool fight in the in the anime. Piru fights against him, and but now we we have Seiya to beat him up immediately. Uh, you can imagine in the actual game if you play this casually, these fights are not so easy as we're making it, them look. So we go straight from Cancer to Scorpio, whatever. Um, even funnier, you will see that we go from Scorpio to Virgo later, so it's completely out of order <laughs> for some reason. I think, I also suspect they maybe have been rushing the development. So they may have reached a point of the anime where it was so popular, they demanded a game or whatever, it was the time. And now they finished uh, as, as fast as possible, so we go from Scorpio to Virgo, whatever. And we fight him again, and he also will fall down with a single attack. In the anime, this is a, the hardest fight for our protagonists, and it's Iki who saves the day by sacrificing himself to beat Shaka, but now he's a goner. We have two fights left. We fight the Gemini armor again. Same procedure. Fill all of the, the bars to get the golden cloth. Attack with the punch, and he goes down. Now for the last fight, the last fight is the only one that is hard-coded to be the first one to attack. So you will see us for the first time taking quote-unquote damage. And also, um, he needs two attacks to, to be beaten. So even though we attack with the Golden Cloth, we have to attack him twice. So this is kind of a quite exceptional case. And another piece of trivia, you will see him, or whatever this is, it's not what is meant to be in the manga or the anime. This is what they suspected the last boss of the anime would be. Some kind of shadowy, monstery thing, mummy thing, whatever this is. Um, yeah, right? So, I believe one of the manga releases had some kind of sketch of this thing in the in the cover or like the back of the cover as, as to uh, suggest this might be the bad, the bad uh, actor, or whatever. But no, completely out. Of, this game is completely out of the lore. <laughs> now we rescue Athena, and this is good. So this is time already. Well, I can leave the credits playing in the meantime. There you go. Everyone's happy. All right, I th I would like to So basically what we get here is the password for playing again and uh if you want to you, you can restart the game with all your stats to have an easier time. But that's all. This is all the game that there is so 
thank you very much for watching and I hope you had a good time. And if you want to see more of my tasks for other games, uh, you have to look for me in taskvideos.org. That's where I have all my, my work and will continue to work on other tasks. So, is the... Have we reached the, the goal for the next game or is this all there is?